first, let me um, talk about the writing assignment. I did shorten this. This used to say three to five pages. And I wanted to say two to three pages, and then she started complaining. And then she threatened to make me take a yoga class or something. So I made this shorter uh, because we're going to start looking at uh, various bases here um, next class So I, as an intro to that. So write a one to two page paper. So it can be relatively short. But since it's short, pay extra attention to your, you know, uh, no broken English, that kind of stuff. So use it as an opportunity to practice your writing. Okay, um, believe me, that's much more for you than me. I don't like sitting there reading 30 papers. All right, nobody does. But um, like I said, I've been teaching for 18 years and I've been teaching in grad programs for um, maybe 12 of those. And obviously in technology, a lot of our grad students are international students, right? So I'm telling you, you can prove your written communication, you're going to have a lot better chance of getting a job. All right. Otherwise, I mean, it's unfortunate, but you see it already. You try to apply for internships and stuff like that. Americans don't take you seriously. Just is the way it is, right? And it sucks. But, I mean, from their perspective, you are a dumb foreigner. And that's what it comes out to. So you need to prove them otherwise, right? So that's uh, where you, you know, it really will help you a lot to work on that written English. Prove them wrong. Let them, let them give you a chance so you can show them you actually have a brain. Okay, because I'll tell you what, some of the people were graduating with undergrads, you know, from, from Wisconsin and stuff, whew, they speak English great. <laughs> no brain to be found. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, writing stuff is good for you, even though I completely understand that you hate it. <laughs> right? One of the uh, guys, he ended up working for me. He was a grad student here uh, a couple years ago. Uh, Chinese guy, Yiming, Yiming Liao, I call him Blade. But uh, really, really bright. Love the programming stuff. Super sharp. Just, you know, and he actually has become a pro. He graduated as MSIT, but that was before we had our master's in computer science. And he's a programmer now. He works as a computer programmer downtown Milwaukee. Just two programming huh? Just yeah, but then he also did a bunch of projects. I mean, he took to it. You know, he was, he was, he was good. He was somebody who would have done a master's in CS if it had been offered. Um, but you know, the thing is, is though, so many of you are like, these programming assignments are killing me. At least you can do the papers, right? You don't like them, but like I can complete it, right? You were like saying, uh, can I even finish this homework? You know, it's the, the programming. He did not want to touch writing stuff. And, and he was like, well, it's good for me because I need to get better at it because he's a, he's a Chinese guy. And, um, yeah, I mean, his, his English was real sketch. <laughs> it's still real sketch, but he is a very good programmer. But, uh. Yeah, so that was always funny because a lot of times the students in these classes, they, uh, as long as there's not too much work, they'd rather do the paper than the programming because the programming is intimidating. The paper they just don't like. They just know they can do it. Um, so here's a shorter paper. Just do a good job on it. All right. The second, uh, the programming assignment, which is actually significantly less code than your assignment was for today by a lot. Um, but it's going to be very specific code, all right? And we'll go through uh, how merge sort works uh, here in a, in a few minutes. Um, that's how we'll finish tonight. I also give you a, a link to merge sort on the web. Here's the Wikipedia page for merge sort. It shows you how it works to give you a little um, visual of, uh, of merge sort and this kind of stuff. You know, you can certainly find Java implementations of merge sort out there. Um, you know, I would strongly encourage you to do it on your own and make sure you try to understand it and stuff like that. But if you really start feeling like you're hitting a wall, you know, you can peek at an implementation and see if it can help you push you in the right direction. Like I said, I'm not going to, you know, if you want to just turn in somebody else's thing, it's, I don't, you know, I'll find out on the exams. So I don't really care. I just would, you're only hurting yourself. Okay. Um. But merge sort's one of these things that's going to be challenging, but it's not because there's a lot of code. So today, the assignment you had for today was easy to, to understand what I was asking you to do. But writing it was, was verbose. There was a lot of, you know, and it was difficult. It was, so really the drill was about breaking things down into those little tiny steps, almost, you know, to, to the point of being ridiculous that you were having to break it down so much. So that's why it was such a drill to do that. Where this one, you don't break it down so much, 
because there really aren't that many pieces. The merge sort in and of itself is relatively simple on how it works. But, you know, you're going to have to, it's kind of struggling with that recursive stuff and, and that kind of uh, stuff that makes um, merge sort, I think, a little bit complex. All right, so, you know, here's, the, they give you the conceptual version of the algorithm. So you can see there's not a whole lot to the algorithm, right? Pretty short. Um, but let me go ahead and uh, let me show you kind of my version of how I teach merge sort. All right, and then your assignment for next class will be to um, write a version of merge sort that sort, sorts an array. All right, now one hint that I'll give you right now you can write down. We've already mentioned it today. We go back to the code here. When we called, uh, that when we have our print array thing here, print int array, I mentioned that Bob and AR both pointed to the same place, right? And I mentioned that had we made changes to Bob in here, had we changed the content of Bob, that change would be globally felt. It would have side effect, okay? That's going to be an important uh, thing to remember with merge sort. It's a good thing that that's how merge sort works, all right? But understand that you're passing around pointers, not copies of arrays, all right? So let me go in here. And I'm going to steal, well, actually, let me steal this guy. Actually, I kind of need to steal both of these rows. Right. And I'm going to keep it relatively short for the number of elements. But I will show you the an odd number of elements because that's the harder case if it's an odd number. All right, I'm gonna randomly fill this up with some numbers. So we'll do three, one, seven, two, four, something like that. All right, so this is my array, let's say. Whatever. All right, so this is my array. My goal is to sort this array. Ultimately, have it be one, two, three, four, seven. Okay, that's what I'd ultimately like it to, uh, to be. Now, one thing that merge sort is based on is this knowledge of whether or not a, um, uh, a, a, an array is trivially sorted. Okay, this concept of being trivially sorted. And what I mean by that is, if I ask you right now as a human, so we kind of keep coming back to this pattern, all of us can look at this and say, this is not sorted, correct? Because we're people. We can look at the numbers in there and say, those aren't in order. But then I'll ask you, how do you know? And that's a little bit more difficult because you just glance at it, you can kind of just see they're not in order. Now we all recognize that inside of our head, we're kind of thinking about the order and rearranging them and stuff like that visually, but we need to capture that somehow. And there's different ways of capturing sorting, um, you know, conceptually capturing sorting. And the one we're going to look at here is called merge sort. But this concept of a trivial sort, trivially sorted list, any a list that is guaranteed to be in order is a one list. All right. So if this was the only thing that I was showing you right here, you can say with confidence that that's sorted because there's only one element in there, right? No other way to write it. It's sorted. I don't need to do any checking. I don't need to do any scanning or comparing things. It's in order. It's a one list. All right. So the way merge sort works at the high level is we keep dividing our data in half over and over again until we finally get down to two one lists. Then we bring those guys back together and we merge those two steps. So it, it follows this concept known as divide and conquer, all right? So we, we first divide, then we merge to get things back in order. So I'm gonna show it to you by example here, all right? So the first thing we ask here is, is this trivially sorted? It's not, because it's not a one list. 
So there's actually a couple of things we're going to keep track of here. At any point in time, I will get to... Uh, I get from there. Why isn't it showing up? I like my emojis. I'm not getting any good emojis from this. That gives me an emoji usually. Very upsetting. All right, so we have high and low. So when we first call merge sort, we're gonna be passing it our array, and then the portion of the array we want that call to deal with, okay? So we'll be passing in three pieces of information, the array, low, and high. Initially, low will be bucket zero, high will be bucket length minus one. We're looking at the entirety of the array. Okay, we know this guy is not trivially sorted because low and high are different numbers. So what are we gonna do? We're going to split this in half and call merge sort again, okay? So depending on how you do cut this in half, you'll either end up with the left side being the two, the, the, the small half and the right side being the large half or vice versa. Doesn't matter as long as you always split the same way. Okay, so I'll go ahead. My first recursive call will be where high is zero or uh, low is zero and high is one. My second recursive call, which I have not made yet, which will be where low is two and high is four. That's the second half. So what I'm going to do here is I've called merge sort on the left half. And then I'm going to call merge sort on the right half, but I have not done that yet because the first call has not returned. I'm stuck in the first call over here right now. All right. Then I ask myself, is this the one list? High and low are different values. Split these again. Merge sort on the left half. Is that guy a one list? Yes. Merge sort on the right half. Is that guy a one list? Yes. So I just made two calls to merge sort here. One on the left half, one on the right half, and both of those guys have now returned. Now I do my merge step, all right? So the merge step is where the actual sorting takes place in merge, step, in merge sort. And what we do is uh, merge sort works by partially sorting portions of our array. And then when we call merge multiple times on partially sorted sections, it ends up being sorted in and of itself, all right? So now that these guys have come back together, it's time to perform the merge step. And the way the merge step works is I'm gonna have, um, let's, let's call this uh, begin one. And begin two. So two different pointers, if you will. One that points to the beginning of the ha left half of my list. And then one that points to the beginning of the right half of my list. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to create a temporary array. that is the same size as the portion of the array I'm currently working with, all right? So this guy matches the size of this guy. And then what I do is I compare begin one and begin two with each other over and over again, storing the result in here. So I say, which should come first, a three or a one? A one should come before a three, right? So I'll store the one here, and then we'll increment begin two. Which should come first, a three 
or an illegal position. Because begin to is no longer pointing to anything that's on my list here, right? It might be pointing to something that does exist in memory, but in terms of the portion of the list that I'm currently staring at, it's not pointing to anything. So which wins, a three or an illegal position? A three wins. Then we increment this guy. Now, even though this guy is pointing over here, he's off the end of his half of the list. So both of these guys are now in illegal positions, which means we've finished the merge. These two dot guys are in order now. So what we do is we copy them back over their original positions, because this was a temporary array, just a, a temporary storage place. So overwrite the three with a one and the one with a three. Remember, this is happening in memory. So that change was felt up here. Make sense? All right. So now I'm done with this call with, well, in this case, I'm done with the original left-hand call to merge sort. So now I'm finally able to get back to my original second merge sort call, right? Is this the one list? Nope. So we split it. And because of the way we've been doing our split, the left half will be the small half. So make sure you're consistent with that. So we'll call merge sort on the left half. Is that the one list? Yes, it is. So we're back. We'll call, then call merge sort on the right half. Is this the one list? No, it's not. So we split that. Call it on the left. Is that the one list? Yep. Call it on the right. Is that the one list? Yep. Bring them back together perform our merge step. What's our merge step? We create the temporary array that's the same size as this guy. Begin one points to the beginning of the first half. Begin two points to the beginning of the second half. We ask ourselves which should come first, a two or a four? The two. Increment the two. Increment the one. What should come first? The four or an illegal position? The four. Increment this guy. Now they're both illegal positions. We know we're done. We'll copy those values over. It just so happens we didn't actually change anything, but we'd still go through the motions. A two becomes a two, a four becomes a four, which then has an impact up here where those guys get overwritten as well. We're now we're done with this temporary. We're done with this call to merge sort. So now the left half has returned from its call to merge sort and it's sorted in and of itself. The right half has returned from merge sort and it's sorted in and of itself. Now we perform a merge step on these. There's the left, there's the right. So begin one points at the beginning of the left half, begin two points at the beginning of the right half, we need our temporary array, which is the same size Why do I keep losing that? That's very strange to consistently do that. Uh, <laughs> okay, so what should come first? A seven or a two? The two? Increment this guy. What should come first? A seven or a four? Four? Increment this guy. What should come first? A seven or an illegal position? Seven? Increment this guy. Now we're done. We copy the stuff back over. Two, four, seven, which then has that global change because we're changing this in actual memory, right? So we're done with that call to merge sort. Okay, so now my original left call to merge sort had finished and my original right call to merge sort has finished. Now the last thing to do is to merge the final list. Notice that the left half is sorted in and of, it, of itself. The right half is sorted in and of itself. So I'll create my temporary array. It's, it's really strange the way it's like acting, isn't it?
So there's my temp. Begin one points to the beginning of the left half. Begin two points to the beginning of the right half. Which should come first, a one or a two? A one. Which should come first, a three or a two? A two. Which should come first, a three or a four? A three. Which should come first, a four or an illegal position? So now we're off the, the, the end of the first half. The four, which comes first, a seven or an illegal position? The seven, copy everything back over, a one becomes a one, a two, a three, a four, a seven, this is done. Final merge step is done. And notice our data is now sorted. That makes sense? Okay, so none of those steps are that bad. But those two recursive calls are going to be a bit difficult. All right, what I would encourage you to do is create several variables. You want to have a begin one, an end one, begin two, end two. Keeping track of the beginning and ending of each half will benefit you for that merge step, knowing when have I walked off the end of one of my halves. Does that make sense? All right. So even though I showed just the begin variables because we were able to fill in the blanks and say, oh, I've walked off the end of the left half. Having those stored in variables will be beneficial to you. All right. Similarly, if we look at finding the midpoint here, we've said that low and high are different values. Therefore, this is not the one list. So I need to call merge sort on the two halves. So to find my first half, well, I can look at this and say my dividing point might be two. So everything from zero to one is my left half and two on is my right half. How did I come up with that number? How did I come up with the midpoint? Okay, it's correct. A common mistake that is made is saying high divided by two. If we say high divided by two right now, that's going to give us the right answer. That'll give us our midpoint of two. All right, then we can say begin one is low, um, end one is high divided by two minus one. Begin two is n one plus one, and n two is equal to high. All those numbers are correct, but for the wrong reason. That midpoint is not high divided by two. It's not high divided by two because when we get to that second half and we have low is here and high is here, we want our midpoint to be three, not high divided by two. So if we take four plus two divided by two, that gives us the three. High plus low divided by two. And so we say middle is equal to high plus low divided by two. This is a common sticky point for this. That's how you find your middle. Then you can decide which half does that belong to. Is low, um, is begin one is low, is n1 equal to middle or is it equal to middle minus one? Doesn't matter which of those you choose, just always choose it the same. All right, that way you never, otherwise you might, you're going to skip a bucket. Okay, if sometimes your left half is the big half and sometimes your right half is the big half, you're not consistently applying your math. That make sense? So when you have an odd number of buckets, one half is going to be bigger than the other. That's okay. Just make sure it's consistently the same half that's, that's bigger. All I'm saying is use the, use the identical math. You don't have to do anything beyond that. 
Okay, it's not a coin flip to figure out where N1 is for a given call. N1 will either be middle or it'll be middle minus one. You get to choose, but always choose it like that. Does that make sense? All right, so um, that's my version of how I teach merge sort. Uh, when you write this, if I were to give you kind of a skeleton version of merge sort, it's um, one list if no call merge sort twice then merge if yes we're done we've already effectively merged so we're just return that call to merge sort will just end without having to do anything special you can you know you can try to merge a one list but it's already sorted Okay, so by definition, you don't need to do much. That's the whole algorithm. So the real trick on the algorithm is making sure you accurately figure out begin one, end one, begin two, end two, and calculate middle correctly. <coughs> no, not char x, because that's for strings. To access the values of the buckets, it'll be ar at bucket i. To set the value at the bucket, it'll also be the same thing. All right. All right. Questions, comments, concerns, bribes. All right. I will see everybody on uh, next Wednesday.